Hello everyone! This video is going to be all about algebra, which is a subcategory of measurement and data, and we're looking at a particular category of algebra called determining unknowns. So, what this means is that we're going to be looking at a short description of what this involves and have a look at an example question. So starting us off is this little description that says determining unknown questions in algebra involves questions where you have to identify numbers or a certain number to replace a symbol or letter, which we call the unknowns in an equation. In this style of question, we might actually have to use our BODMAS skills to simplify questions as well as work with numbers on either sides of an equation. To solve these questions, we might need to write number sentences to determine the relationship for the symbols. We may also need to combine one or more sentences together to logically work out the letter or symbol. Guess and check is also a potential strategy where we can try each answer option and see whether the number sentence holds true for each case. Okay, so. Reading this, we can tell that determining unknown questions in algebra is basically kind of like solving a puzzle. We are given some hints in the forms of, well, it could be anything. It could be various numbers, it could be number sentences, but the common thing is that these questions will basically have something that is missing. So that's going to be represented by a symbol or letter. And these can be alphabet letters, they could be uh, shapes, they could also be uh, letters from different languages, such as the Greek alphabet. Now, it doesn't matter what form these take, all we need to do is use the clues to figure out what number they represent. And those strategies have been listed in this description. We saw we can try to manipulate the number sentence to try and get the answer. Sometimes we actually need to manipulate multiple number sentences. And there is also the last resort of guess and check. Now, I would actually put guess and check as your absolute last resort where you just don't know what else to do because guess and check usually requires a lot of time, especially if there's a lot of different answer options you need to go through. So then you can try that, but you should be able to uh, manipulate number sentences to complete these types of questions. Now, one other key thing that we want to mention is the fact that Algebra is all about making sure that you utilize your BODMAS skills. So BODMAS is an acronym and it stands for the order of operations that you must complete your, whoops, that's not it, <laughs> BODMAS would be what we're talking about. And this is representative of what order you should always follow when you're completing these algebraic questions. Basically, we realized a long time ago that there are a bunch of different ways you can interpret a single number sentence depending on what kind of calculations it asks you to do. So that makes it really complicated if everyone interprets the same number sentence differently. So we all decided that we're going to follow this one rule and that reduces any confusion and any potential issues in the future. So it's always important that we also follow this rule. So BODMAS always starts from the left going to the right. B stands for any brackets that you might encounter in the question and O stands for orders. Now orders to me doesn't really make much sense. So sometimes I see the acronym as BIDMAS and they're basically the same thing because I in this case stands for indices. So orders mean any exponents or any roots. So basically any indices that you might see in the question, those have to be completed first. Then the D and the M represent your division and multiplication respectively, and your A and S represent addition and subtraction. So whenever you see a complicated algebraic equation, always do anything within the brackets first. Then you can complete any of the orders. 
then you can complete the division and multiplication in whichever order you want and then you can finally do your addition and subtraction where neither of those take priority over each other and we'll go through exactly how you might want to manipulate these number sentences by going through this example question so the aim of this example question isn't really to get the answer, but we want to develop the skills that we might use when we're doing determining unknown questions. So we talked about the importance of using number sentences. And here in this question, we see that the question wants us to figure out the mass of this circle that we see on this uh, scale in the question. So we want to transform this question into a number sentence and that's just because our brain just finds it easier to work with these things rather than trying to understand this picture. So we're going to do exactly that. Since we've got a scale, we can understand that represents the mass of everything on this side of the scale has to be the same as the other side of the scale. So that means we can represent this information as a number sentence. So let's add all of the things on this side of the uh, scale, which is seven plus seven plus seven plus the two circles plus eight kilograms. And if I want to represent this side of the number, sorry, the scale, this is going to be 16.5 plus 16.5 plus eight kilograms. Now, this side of the scale doesn't have any funny unknowns, so we can just simplify it and just add these numbers as usual. So 16 plus 5 plus 16 plus 5 plus 8 should give us 41 kilograms. Now, conceptually speaking, we just talked about how this side of the scale has to equal this side. So when we have these two number sentences, we can actually say they are the same thing. So what I'm going to do is just simply say 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus the two circles plus 8 kilograms equals 41 kilograms. So... Let's take a closer look at how we can figure out what the circles could be. So just like in algebra, where you can combine like terms, we're going to do exactly that. It doesn't matter if, it, if the unknown is a shape or a letter or anything like that. We can still apply the basic uh, strategies of algebra. So what that means is we can combine all the letters together. Uh, sorry, all the numbers together. So 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 8 should give us 29 kilograms. And then also add all the things that aren't numbers together. So we've got two circles. So let's do that. And we still know this is equal to 41 kilograms. Now, we've got a much simpler looking equation. And we can actually get the two circles to be the subject of the number sentence. And what that means is that it simply means we only want the two circles to be on one side of the equal sign. Now, whichever side it stays on is arbitrary. You can choose, but just to make your lives easier, let's leave the two circles alone and actually move this 29 kilograms to the other side of the equal sign. So doing that gives us two circles is equal to 41 minus 29. So that simplifies to six kilograms. So if two of these circles is equal to six kilograms, we can figure out that just one circle must be half of that weight. So that must equal to six kilograms or option C. Okay, so that would be exactly how you would tackle uh, the majority of determining unknown questions. Whatever clues you're given, try your best to turn it into a number sentence and simplify that number sentence using your algebraic techniques and it should hopefully provide you with the answer. And that is going to be much faster than trying if four kilograms makes the two sides equal, then seeing it's wrong, so trying five kilograms, then finally hitting the answer with six kilograms. You can see if we've got five options, guess and check just takes so much time when you can simply figure out the answer by doing a quick calculation. So those would be all the tips I've got for algebraic questions. Hopefully this helped you in the future when you're answering similar questions as well.